Hey everyone, and welcome back to Dead Mall Walking. Abercrombie and Fitch might occupy spots in more than a few dead malls, but it's not exactly dead itself, although many retail experts think it stays unnumbered. Even so, I wanted to feature this new store for a couple of reasons. First, it's a significant relocation that speaks to the way the brand is attempting to reinvent itself for a new generation. Second, this store was previously home to the now defunct Brooks Brothers for more than 15 years, and I want to see if there's any traces of its presence left. Beyond that, my video of London's Ralph Lauren flagship has been performing well enough that I think there's an appetite out there for videos like these. So let's get into it. The store itself is bright and airy, and feels sort of like an upmarket gap. It's a far cry from Abercrombie's past. The volume on the speakers has been turned way down, and you don't feel like you're at risk of choking on fierce cologne. And there's less of an emphasis on their trademark moose. Although he's still around. Abercrombie opened its first European flagship store in London back in 2007. The reaction was phenomenal, with queues around the block and making a record setting £140,000, around $200,000 of sales within its first six hours of opening. There isn't much in the way of footage of the Burlington Gardens location online. I found a couple of low quality YouTube videos, one from more than a decade ago, and most photos you can find of the interior are dark and blurry. Of course I'd expect nothing less from Abercrombie a brand that couldn't find the light switch for more than a decade. But not everyone was so psyched about Abercrombie moving into seven Burlington Gardens at the end of Savile Row, which we're walking up now. Excuse my shadow. Built in 1725, the site was originally a mansion and would later become a hub for the Bank of England. Some were concerned that the store's presence would bring down the tone of the area, resulting in some very sartorial protesters. But with little in the way of overlap between customer bases, these fears went largely unrealised. Savile Row persists, and tailors there continue to do business to this day. Like Henry Poole, who many consider to be the founding tailor of Savile Row. A bespoke suit here starts at £3,500, or around $5,000. Meanwhile, Abercrombie and Fitch has moved on to their new premises on Regent Street, without leaving behind so much as a label scar. In fact, the only sign that they ever called this Grade 2 listed building home is a tattered American flag flying from the roof. Now, let's get back to Regent Street. If you're wondering how different this place used to look, the answer is very. Brooks Brothers blue carpets, dark mahogany and made-to-measure areas are all gone, along with this beautiful mosaic floor. Its replacement is far less inspiring. Even the main staircase has had kind of a downgrade. All of that has been replaced by lighter woods, white panelling and black metal accents. And a seating area that feels like it was made for pre-drinking before a beachy night out. I did find one interesting feature that's been left behind though. These gold cases that I assumed, and later confirmed, were used to display ties. They sit empty now because Abercrombie doesn't, and presumably never will, sell ties. It's wild to me that as much, if not more, floor space in here is devoted to children's wear as it is to men and women. In the US, I've always seen Abercrombie kids, with the lowercase a, relegated to corners of malls far away from main Abercrombie stores. Something like a teenager who doesn't want to be seen with their younger sibling. But it seems like a market they're really going after here. 
Maybe the idea is that kids will drag their parents down to the basement with the hope that mum and dad will see something they want along the way. Which begs the question, who is Abercrombie for now? They have band t-shirts emblazoned with the Grateful Dead, the Rolling Stones and the Beastie Boys, but the average teen doesn't care about these bands, and might never even have heard of them. 90s kids may have fond or not so fond memories of the brand, but that doesn't mean they'll actually shop here. Is the company quote unquote cool anymore? And if not, will it ever be again? Abercrombie & Fitch still feels collegiate, but not in the way it did back then. Hoodies, sweats and flip-flops are still around, but the mannequins in here have an elevated normcore look that wouldn't seem out of place on your favourite TikToker. Although interestingly, it was sister company Hollister that launched sub-brand Social Tourist in conjunction with Charlie and Dixie D'Amelio rather than ANF proper. Despite everything, I can't help but admire this bold attempt at rebranding. Time will tell whether this relocation is just what the UK arm of Abercrombie needs, or if this unit will end up being somewhere that another iconic American brand goes to die. Thanks for checking out this video, likes and subscribes are always appreciated, and my Instagram is linked in the description below. Until next time, goodbye from Abercrombie and Fitch in London, both old and new.